what's going on YouTube. So in today's market, of course, SUVs are dominating sales, which has made quite a bit less demand for small and affordable sedans. However, that doesn't mean this segment is any less competitive, which is why this 2022 Jetta is going under the knife for an extensive mid-cycle refresh. So in a world of rising gas prices, is this German small sedan the car to buy? Let's go ahead and find out. So of course, what refresh would be complete without some exterior updates, and indeed we do see that here with the 2022 Jetta. They're not radical upgrades, but of course we do have the latest rendition of Volkswagen's grille. Here it is a little bit wider than it was before, slightly different finish, a little more rounded, and on most models you're going to have the chrome strips that you see here on this SE model. However, new for 2022 is a brand new trim called Sport. And with that, you're going to have a little bit more aggressive looking elements, including a grille that's blacked out. Let's go over here and take a look at the headlights. Uh, these have also been upgraded this year. You're going to have standard full LED headlights, which is a nice touch. Uh, these are reflectors for the low and high beams. They would be projector if you go for the SEL trim level. And the daytime running light is also LED, but the turn signal is going to be incandescent. There's no fog lights or anything, but the uh, lower fascia here does look pretty aggressive. And heading around here to the side, we do also find some updated wheel options. 16-inch alloys for the base model, 17-inch alloys for all three of the other mainline uh, trim levels. We have the SE with the uh, gray finished alloys. I think they look pretty nice uh, in contrast with this blue paint color. As we move on up here to the mirrors, you're going to find standard heating. You have a new feature for 2022, and that is standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert across all of the trim levels. So I do like that they... Uh, made that adjustment and then finally if you chose that new sport trim you would have black mirror caps now let's talk about the side of the volkswagen jetta now as you can see this is a pretty long looking vehicle and that's not just an illusion we're looking at a length of 186.5 inches which has placed it as longer than the vast majority of the competition that's going to be about three to four inches longer than the average thing within this segment i also just like the side profile in general i think it gives me a lot of Audi-esque vibes, and I think that's also going to continue when you look at the rear design of the Jetta. I think this <laughs> this is really always looked like an Audi A4 to me, and I think that continues for 2022. So as far as just the elements back here, it is a very classy design, and I'm a big fan of it. So we have our Volkswagen emblem right here in the middle, and then off to the side, these taillights are really the element that I think looks most like the A4 because they're going to be very premium full LED taillights on every single Jetta model, which is really unheard of in a segment like this to have full LED taillights, especially as premium looking as these, and that's on all of the models. Then if we drop down to the lower diffuser area, this has been changed a little bit for 2022, and you're not going to have exposed exhaust outlets until you go for that GLI model. So. Unfortunately, we don't have those. However, I just really like the overall design of this model. But guys, if you're buying within this segment, the warranty and the safety information is gonna be very important to you. So let's go ahead and discuss those points. So for your safety systems, you are gonna have standard Ford emergency braking on every single Jetta model. And if you go for at least the SE trim level, you will have their IQ drive system, which will further include lane keeping assist as well as adaptive cruise control with a traffic jam assistant. Now, furthermore, if you want to go for the SEL or the GT, GL, GLI, excuse me, um, that will further throw in auto high beam headlamps. Now, for your warranty information, you are going to have a very good warranty for your 50,000 mile, both basic and powertrain warranty. Volkswagen is also throwing in two years and 20,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. But guys, that's going to wrap up the exterior design of this Refresh 22 Jetta. Now, let's go ahead and check it and see what they've done on the inside before we take it out in a spin. So on the refreshed Jetta, you will find their smart entry system with the brand's typical key fob on the SE trim level and above. And to get inside with this system, you're just going to press the black button on the handle to unlock the door.
And climbing inside here, just like with the exterior, you're not going to notice any humongous changes to the overall design, but there are plenty of detail updates and new features uh, throughout the cabin, which of course I'm going to talk about. But first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about those colors and materials straight from the start. So for the base S trim, as well as the new sport model, those are going to come standard with cloth seating. Uh, when you get to the SE trim level though, like what we have today, you get the leatherette seating. We have the black option, there is also a gray option as well. And then the top end SEL is actually going to sub out this for real leather, and that's going to give you the choice of black or brown. Now as far as the seats here on the driver's side, they are going to be six-way power adjusting with two-way lumbar support for the SE trim level and above. And let's go ahead and kind of look around at the materials because there is a pretty upscale vibe in this Jetta. So over here on the door trim, we do have a nice leatherette with the stitching detail. It is leatherette above that as well, soft touch along the top, and we have a faux aluminum accent. As far as the windows, they are one touch auto up and down for all four, and you can also get memory seats on the SEL trim level. Carrying on up the dashboard, we have a nice soft touch plastic all across it with a stitching detail. More of this nice looking faux aluminum trim through here. You can get a faux wood trim on the SEL trim level. Got some piano black accents through there. And as we go down, of course, it is going to be hard to touch down here, but everything does fit together very nicely as you expect for a German vehicle and it feels super solid. Now also down here is where you're going to find the push button start. That is also on the SE trim level and above. And right from the start here, you eagle-eyed viewers who know about the previous generation Jetta, you'll realize we have a new standard feature for 2022. That is this digital gauge cluster. Like I said, included on every trim, even the base model, that's pretty nice. This is the eight inch digital cockpit system. Um, there is a pro version, which is 10 and a quarter inches. That's going to be on the SEL as well as the GLI trim levels. But the other trim levels will still come with this model. It is reconfigurable, which is pretty nice. So you can change different designs. You can also customize what information is on each side. This is a really nice setup and I'm definitely happy to see this as, as a standard feature. Um, additionally, we have rain sensing wipers on the SE trim level and above, which is a pretty rare feature for this segment. All right, now as we pull back to the steering wheel, of course we have the nice leather wrap steering wheel with the latest Volkswagen emblem and design. Uh, you can get leather wrap steering wheel on the lower two trim levels as well, but it starts on the SE trim level. And then the wheel itself is going to be manual tilt and telescoping. Heating is available on the SEL. Well, let's go ahead and check the interior storage. So I'll start out under our center console here. If we lift that up, we've got a very nicely sized console. Um, I actually really like that they finished it in this light color. Uh, it makes it stand out. So even though there's no lighting, it just makes it so much brighter. And also I'm wondering now why more automakers don't do this because it's pretty nice. Here's the coupons though. Nothing passes until it swallows the coupons. Does that no problem. So it's definitely good for this segment. Up in front of that, we got a little slot there, two cup holders, and then at the very front, we have a generously sized area with a rubber lining there to hold your phone in place. And we also have two USB type C ports. Let's pull on back here to the shifter. Of course, you can get a manual transmission. We've got the automatic option with this model. Uh, pull back for drive, bump over here to the left if you want to shift manually. There are no paddles on the steering wheel. And then when we head into reverse, of course, you're going to find a standard backup camera. Um, you can get parking sensors if you go for the SEL trim level or the GLI trim level. Um, we don't have parking sensors. We also don't have any active trajectory. And the camera itself is a little crunchy looking, but you know, of course, uh, in this segment of vehicle, it's almost expected. And then when you put it into park, you do also have an electronic parking brake off to the side of the shifter. Now rising on up the dashboard, as you can see, we do have a dual zone automatic climate control system. Adjustment is very easy with these two knobs. The lower two trim levels are gonna come with a manual climate control setup instead. Uh, you'll also notice here with the SE trim level one above, we have the three stage heated seats. Um, but interestingly, you can actually get ventilated seats on the SEL trim level, which is certainly a very rare feature for this segment of vehicle. And then next we'll head on up here to the audio system and go ahead and give it a sample.
So overall sound quality is actually quite nice for the standard sound system. You can also get Beats Audio if you want something a little bit better. Um, and I do like the design that they've done with the uh, speaker grills there with the little lines that kind of run through the rest of the door trim as well. Looks nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the infotainment system next. So standard on the vast majority of the models is going to be the six and a half inch display you see here. Um, you do get an eight inch display if you go for the SEL trim level or that performance GLI option. Um, but as far as this one, it covers all your bases pretty well. Um, you have shortcut buttons along the side. That's how you're going to navigate through the system itself. Clicking into the menu, this is where you can see all your various different options. You do also have App Connect, so as you can see, that gives you the ability to connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay uh, through a USB connection. Um, I'm not sure about this, but I think that if you get the higher end 8 inch display, I believe it is a wireless connection. Heading on up here to the mirror, we actually have a nice frameless design with the three Homelink Universal remotes as well as the compass built in. That starts on this SE trim level. And then up at the top, you're not going to notice a sunroof on this specific example. That is going to be included on the SEL and above. Well guys, I'm happy to be here in the rear seat of the Volkswagen Jetta because this is a really, really nice place to spend time and really surprisingly spacious. We have 37.4 inches of rear legroom, 37.2 inches of headroom, which does make this one of the largest offerings within the entire segment. Um, it's just a lot of space. I mean, really, this could be larger than a lot of mid-size sedans. As you can see, I'm five foot nine. Drew's five foot eight, and this is the seat adjustment. I still have probably five inches or so of room between my knees and the seat back. My feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. Overall, I'm just super comfortable, which is honestly not a given within this segment. Now let's turn and talk about our features, though. So here in the center, we're not going to have anything. This is the SE model. Um, you do have to go for the SEL, and that will throw in heated rear seats, so I do like that that's an available feature on the Jetta. A lot of the segment uh, leaders like the Honda Civic have eliminated that feature. Um, now as far as the center armrest, we do have a really nice one. We have cup holders inside, and then turn to your door trim. The door trim is going to be hard touch, as you would expect, across the vast majority of it. The armrest is padded, though, and then we do have a bottle holder down below that. Now walking up to the cargo area of the Jetta, this is another area where you're going to have a surprising good amount of space. So let's go ahead and open it up. In order to do that, just locate the button under the lid, and you will notice Volkswagen has even included a really nice dampening. Honestly, that's like the same dampening that they use in like Audi products like the Audi A4. Um, so I'm very impressed to see that. We also do have a handle to close it, so that's a nice premium touch that the vast majority of the competition just completely eliminates. Now, as far as the cargo capacity back here, looking at 14.1 cubic feet of cargo capacity for the Jetta, that is once again one of the largest offerings in the entire segment. Um, a lot of mid-sized sedans fall in that 14 to 15 cubic foot car cargo capacity range, so you're really going to have a lot of space when you go for the Jetta. I also want to point out the seats do fold 60-40 split, and as far as the finishings, we do have a nice floor mat here, and then if I lift it up, you will notice there's a spare tire up underneath of the floor. Now for your passenger seat, it is going to be manually adjusting on every single Jetta model. And then as far as your glove box here, <laughs> holy moly guys, <laughs> this is like the biggest glove box I think I've ever seen in this segment. It is absolutely massive. So all for your Hardee's coupons, look at that. You can fit every single one of them in there. It just slides right in, it's completely swallowed up. Up top, we do have a sun visor. It's going to have an integrated mirror in. Uh, we do not have any lighting. And then if we detach it, there is not an extension in the end. Upgrades that's pretty important for 2022 is that we actually have a new engine on board. That's going to be a one and a half liter turbo four cylinder engine, making 158 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque. That is more power than what was standard last year, and we'll talk about this a little later. But also, we're looking at efficiency. 
efficiency gains as well. So that is certainly a good thing to see more power and better fuel economy on board. Now, as far as the performance, one of the first things that both Mace and I noticed is that torque off the line, <laughs> Yeah. you know, it feels quite spunky when you're first taking off. Now, obviously that's not like a ton of power that's gonna just blow you away, but it's certainly right in line with what the competition offers. And I certainly noticed that the uh, torque is greater than what most in this segment are offering. Right. Now, if you go for the GLI, if that's not enough power for you, of course, they do offer that. That's like a Civic SI competitor that's going to have um, 228 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. We're hoping to cover that in a separate review. And that was our auto start-stop system working. Really nice. Um, yeah. Super smooth. I'm quite impressed by that, um, just how smooth it is and how quickly it restarted. We're kind of stuck behind this uh, landscaping truck here, but I will go ahead and talk about the transmission. Um, so what we have on board and what most people that buy the Jetta will end up getting is an eight speed automatic transmission. When you're just slowly accelerating like most people do, very smooth and nice. Um, when you hit the throttle a little harder, still nice and smooth. Um, it's a good transmission overall. Now what's important though, about the Jetta, and it's increasingly becoming super rare in this segment, is the fact that we can still get a manual transmission. We don't have to even get the Performance GLI to get the six-speed manual transmission. We can actually get the basic two trim levels, the yeah. S and the Sport trim level are actually going to come standard with a six-speed manual. So I do appreciate giving that extra option for a little bit more of an enthusiast choice. Yeah. But guys, I do want to just take a second here while we're cruising along going around 40 miles an hour and it's just a suburban area and talk about the ride quality for the Jetta. Um, just from riding around here today while we've been reviewing this car, it's been very impressive. I think this is one of the best riding vehicles in the entire segment. Uh, Volkswagen has done a really great job of just smoothing out the bumps and uh, making this more affordable vehicle feel a lot more expensive than it is. I mean, there was a you know, like a storm drain in the road and it just did a great job of soaking it up. I think the seats are fairly comfortable and we are going to get a sound level reading so we can compare to those big rivals like the Civic and Corolla. Right. Um, one of the important things is that this feels pretty solid. Like there's just like a solidity to the structure. Um, feels German. You know, yeah. <laughs> it has that yeah. German solidity. Exactly. I do like that. You know, that carries on throughout all of like the German cars. It's like they can't take it out even though this is a more affordable vehicle. Yeah. Not bad at all. Not bad. You I hear I can, a lot of the turbo. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> that is really interesting. The turbo is very pronounced in terms of the sound, so it's pretty cool. Let's yeah. go ahead and get that sound level reading uh, as I get back up to 55 here. We're looking at 53.6 <laughs> Sorry, our sound level reading. Guys, that's really low. Um, this road is smoother than some of the roads that we do test at, so that is a little bit, a little piece of that sound level reading. However, I think just in general, this is a very quiet vehicle on the inside. Like Drew said, I think there's certain German things they can't take out, and it's very quiet, very solid ride quality and all of those things. So Drew mentioned that it's not just the uh, you know, powertrain that's getting updated. It's also the fuel economy that's getting improved by going for this turbo engine. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So this particular model that we have with us today is going to be rated at 29, 40, 33 miles a gallon combined. Um, if you go for the more basic models, uh, the S is going to be rated at 35 combined. Um, the manuals are even coming in at 34 combined. <laughs> it's just really good fuel economy, guys. These are very impressive figures even for this segment um, and it just that's just gonna matter a lot more and more as gas gets more and more expensive 
All right, well, it's time for our slam dunk and air ball, the signature thing that we do in all of our reviews. Now, I'll kick us off with the slam dunk. There are a lot of things that we could have slam dunked. Um, we were just discussing this a little bit off camera. Uh, I think one of our favorite elements, I guess we'll just call it the engine this year because that's a new feature for 2022. Um, and it really is a big improvement. We got a lot of torque on board, great fuel economy. I mean, it's just a solid engine through and through. We are also a big fan of the styling and the space that this jet offers though, so we're kind of going between those things. Right, and on the airball side of things, uh, honestly the biggest thing I have a problem with in this specific example is what I mentioned on the inside, the uh, backup camera is strangely low resolution. Um, certainly not good looking even for this class of vehicle. Now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing for the Jetta. So the S model, keep in mind this does come with the manual transmission, is going to be starting at $20,365. Um, when you go for the SE trim level, like what we have today, that's going to start at $24,095. This particular model does have just a few uh, accessories like the auto dimming mirror. We also have the destination charge of $995 brings this one to $25,845. But overall, guys, like we said at the very beginning, this is a very competitive segment. And, you know, even though less people are choosing this segment uh, typically than they were before, it's still extremely popular because, I mean, why wouldn't this be popular? You have an affordable sedan, large space, stuff like that. And this is a really compelling offering in this segment. I really like what Volkswagen has done to really double down on the strengths of the Jetta, improve um, and make it even more competitive than before. And this is certainly something that you guys should take a look at and consider if you're shopping in this segment. Well, guys, we appreciate you making it this far in our in-depth review of the 2022 Volkswagen Jetta SE. If you made it this far, hopefully that means it was helpful in your purchasing decisions or you just have been watching because you like cars. And in both of those scenarios, please hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out, it helps give us better access to cars to show you all on our channel. And also you just won't want to miss out on the cool cars that we're going to have coming soon. Also follow us on TikTok and Instagram and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.